Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. It's a billy club. It's a gun. No, it's a combination policeman's truncheon and extension pistol barrel. Or at least that's what inventor Edward Norton Moore of California called it. He applied for the patent in December 1916 and received approval in October of 1918. I had a chance to handle one of these odd billy club extensions and even got to shoot a revolver outfitted with one at the range. Sometimes that's not enough force to bring the bad guy down. So if you run out of your six rounds of ammunition, we got a billy club, a cute little wallet. Oh, Here are a few things I learned. I discovered that the club, at least the one I used, is actually designed to be used on a Colt revolver and not a Smith & Wesson, even though the patent documents don't stipulate usage on a particular make or model, and even though the patent drawing looks a bit more like a Smith & Wesson based on the cylinder latch release. At any rate, manipulation of the attachment ring was difficult and it didn't engage completely with the front sight when I tried it on a Smith & Wesson military and police revolver, later the Model 10. However, when I switched it over to a Colt Army Special, it fit perfectly. The club slid onto the barrel and locked securely in place on the Colt's front sight. From there, it was time to actually see how well the Colt would shoot with this contraption hanging off the barrel. The patent calls for a front sight on the club, which is comprised of a spring and a screw. However, this didn't make it to production, as the actual unit does not have a front sight, nor is there even a spot for one. Firing the revolver was a breeze as far as the attachment was concerned. It did not have an effect on the point of impact when I was shooting it, and comparing it with and without, my shots grouped basically the same. Now the final test was to try the club uh, as an actual club uh, and not as just a pistol attachment. So with my hand wrapped firmly around the grip and none of my fingers in the trigger guard, I approached my cardboard assailant and landed a handful of blows. The club stayed firmly attached the entire time and was not loose at the end of the encounter. Now, obviously hitting cardboard isn't like hitting a human uh, in any kind of a skirmish, but this proved at the very least that the club can be effectively swung at a target while it's attached to the gun. It's a neat concept, but I don't think there's any surprise as to why it didn't catch on. Even though I made sure that the gun was empty and my fingers were not near the trigger, I don't know if every officer in the heat of the moment would manage to make sure to be as safe as that when they needed to use it. And doing otherwise could easily cause a negligent discharge, even with the heavy trigger pull of a double action revolver. And so that's kind of the short lived saga of the Billy Club revolver. It's an interesting design, but at the end of the day, it answers a question that no one really asked in the first place. Thanks for tuning into this episode of High Caliber History. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.